Greetings, Mandrake here. This is Mission 10, Nexus, on the difficulty Legendary, with all skulls on except for Bandana. Deathless. No deaths in this mission. I'm carrying a BR with a Volatile Skewer, which is specifically for the Hunter fight, so I won't be using it until then. Down. Guess. Get right into this because there's a yes. lot of details, a lot yeah, going on. So new. this upcoming room is going to have a mule with a plasma the pistol. It's going to be six fire. grunts. Three of we them are sleeping, it. and I want to pick off For at least the grunt on the left, so they didn't flank me because that tends to happen. And I want to be able to headshot this guy without a nade shot. Good, got that. Now I need to pick up this plasma pistol. Go. Now I need to get rid of this. Jackal Major, he drops a plasma pistol, and I want to put a drop wall out in front of that hard light coil. And that worked out, and that was kind of a big one. He fires those rockets while I'm hiding behind those crates, he'll hit those crates and they'll splatter me. So there's, there's a lot of ways to die on this. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with this. There's still one more hard light coil on the left side that I'm not going to mess with. I want to try and keep, since these uh, grunts know there's a lot of action on the right side, we can keep the one over here on the right. That one in the middle, you see him in the threat sensor, he's scripted to stay in that area and not push up here. And I will take out this brute from distance through the drop wall and get the uh, shock effect, additional shock effect with the uh, projectiles. When I cross a certain point, then he kind of wants to push up, but I'm just going to push up, punch him a couple times, shoot him, and I'm going to back away quickly because there's another grunt at the end of the room who scripted the hangout at that end, and so I'm going to save him uh, for an, an easy kill. Since I got my shield back, I don't need to mess with him to get a shield. I'm just going to easily get a kill off of him, and I don't want to use any more plasma pistol. So I'm just going to use this AR, shoot it through a drop wall, and then headshot him. Sometimes he'll drop a nade and it'll kill him, but I find that doesn't happen that often, so I end up having to shoot him. I've seen him sometimes take the nade and get blown across the room and still survive. Kind of silly. The next room is going to be the real wild card. It is a difficult one. In total, there's four elites. You'll get one in the first adjoining room. In the second adjoining room, on the back side, is going to be three elites. Two of them are going to be kind of working together. There's a third one that hangs out near the, uh, the doorway, or the door that's like your destination is your exit. Uh, but he does push up. Once one or two of the elites goes down, he pushes up. He grunts will push up uh, but to get things started in this next room there's going to be four skirmishers a jackal major is going to walk down the middle he scripted to walk down this middle bridgeway walkway just got him there's one of the other uh, one of the four skirmishers there's going to be a second one that's going to come down the walkway they come one through the left doorway one through the right doorway and i picked off the uh, the third one Fourth one is scripted to hang out down below. You're funny too. There's a trigger line to walk across, and he will advance and will kind of go up around the other way. You'll see across it now. He walks, walks up the other path, and that elite's going to push up and cross the that same trigger line that triggers him to push up. So it works out if I can just grapple pound this guy. There's there's such inconsistencies with why it works and why it doesn't work, and I'm glad that that worked this time. There's going to be several grunts. I think there's six in total. One is going to be at the end of this bridge walkway. And there's going to be an elite to the left doorway, an elite to the right doorway. And there's, a tri again, another trigger line I'll be walking across that's going to get them to push up. So I want to noob combo this grunt, and then I'll try and grapple down one of the... Uh, and I go into this habit of scoping in, and I didn't need to scope in, and then I end up going down into this really bad spot because I'm trapped down there, and a nade finds its way down there. So I've got shield damage. 
And I'm going to put a threat sensor in on this pillar so I can see what's going on. Lots of months. Three leads. Two of them don't. Okay, now you can see the two to the left and one to the right. So I want to try and grapple pound this one on the right side. I also have those hard light coils. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And my thing was to just try and throw one on it, but I'm just going to grab one. Now here's something fortunate that happens. It is very bizarre. It happens behind my back. An elite pushed up and a grunt threw an aid. You can see him stuck in the ceiling. Just some... Uh, that just happened behind my back. I'm not sure what happened there because I killed that first elite inside that room and that's not him. There's only one elite remaining, so I want to try and get my shield back from this grunt here in the middle. And then I'll work on the remainder of these enemies. Should be, and I guess it was just one elite. Three grunts are showing on the threat sensor. And I think that's all that's remaining. Now, if you take too much time, these guys will push up into this room. And if you keep falling back into that next room, they'll push all the way in. It'll, it'll just keep falling. They'll pursue you. And he went down the ramp. That's going to make using this coil difficult because... You want to hit the ground next to him, and you got he's down a ramp so you can't see him. I won't have a good line of sight with the, with the coil. I got options. I could try my little special com uh, noob combo with the elite, but there's crunch, and so it's going to be a little hard. I also want to save one of these crunches in case I get shield damage. There's one of the cases where the grapple pound didn't work. The shot coil, I mean, sorry, the hard light coil actually worked that time. Now I want to get just get my shield back from uh, this, little bugger, this little bugger. And I really didn't need to plasma pistol on them. That Jackal Major from earlier that I shot at the end of the bridge drops a plasma pistol and with all that action and all the stuff going on I did manage to walk over and pick it up. So the plasma pistol's got good ammo in it. I don't think I use it too much if at all but I am going to carry it with me for quite a ways. Heat wave will be necessary. It will come in handy. I'm going to be moving quite a quite a uh, large stockpile of weapons. I'm going to gather up lots of weapons, leaving to max out the sword, the ammo, of the sword, the hard light, the sorry, the heat wave. I'll get a pulse carbine, and I need to go back and get the rocket launcher and skewer. I realize that moving a stockpile, collecting weapons, or item running does not make for good viewing. With the chapters I have created and the way they're arranged, you can easily skip to the next chapter for the next engagement. Weapons that I'll be using for enemies in the upcoming rooms is going to include the heat wave, plasma pistol, pulse carbine. And weapons that I plan to use for the Hunters, which pretty much I'm going to be collecting from the beginning here, all the way into the Hunter fight. It's going to have what you're seeing I'm moving right now, which is the Volatile Skewer and the Rockets. All the Rockets that I can collect, I want to take at least two full Rocket Launchers with me for the Hunter fight. I find sometimes it could be a little more, and sometimes maybe 
one and a half or one and a third, one and two thirds. It really just kind of varies. There is an ugly bug in the game that I'm not sure what goes on with it, but with the um, skirm the skimmers. Shoot and kill a skimmer, drops the rocket launcher, it goes through the floor, or you don't even see the rocket launcher at all, it just disappears. So my new, the best tactic I have with them is to allow them to shoot the rockets first before I shoot back and try and kill them. There's been times where I have yeah, there's going to be two jackal, uh, jackal snipers, there's three grunts, and there's going to be one of these skimmers that's going to be pushing up here. And I just want to kill him with a sword. Things got a little chaotic. Did manage to, yeah, you know, how is that grunt survive? Still managed to um, get the rocket launcher to drop. Now that they've pushed up, there's a second skimmer that I think will also push up. It, the, the scripting varies, at least its algorithm varies with uh, whether it's timing, how, how long it takes to do, how long you wait here or something like that, or just all the action, and they kind of get curious and push up. There's still two more skimmers in here and two more back at the door. And so this time, one of the skimmers did, the second skimmer did not push up. And so as I was saying with the skimmer, is I find times I shoot and kill them before they shoot or before they see me and you don't see a rocket launcher. And so the new thing has been I want to allow them to see me and shoot at me with the rocket launcher. I know it sounds silly, but it, it gives me the best chance of them dropping it when they die. And even then, it's still not a guarantee and still doesn't always happen. I don't know if we'll see it in this playthrough, but I find that uh, whenever I kill one of the skimmers and he doesn't drop the rocket launcher, you don't see it on the ground, I run a scan and you'll find it maybe 50 feet under the floor. And so there's some kind of weird collision or something going on. So here we got these two. Allow them to shoot. Oh, alright, I see that one is shooting, so I'm going to go ahead and kill, kill that one. And then the one on the left, yep, thanks for shooting. And then I'm going to take it. So there should be two rocket launchers. There's one on the left, but where's the one on the right? And so that's where the numbers and with what happens with the rocket launchers, I, I can't explain or know what's going on. I, know, I do want to take two full rocket launchers. I can get by with like one and a third, one and a half, and, and manage that when going after the hunters. There should be two... Uh, stalker rifles here. Found only one. At the exit, there's going to be a jetpack brute captain and two grunts. And when he sees you, he likes to throw nades and sometimes might shoot with the uh, heat wave that he has. I'll get set up with a... Yeah, I'm still running scans trying to find the rocket launchers and the... the uh, stalker rifles. Yeah, here come the nades. And I'll just hide in this little corner here. I'll put the drop wall down. And there we go, the stalkers. And then I just try and get the head... You know, I'll take a shield out and try and knock his helmet off with the stalker and then get him a sim simple headshot. Should be two skimmers in that back hallway. What I want to try and do is draw them out and have them push up. Once again, I want them to shoot. And I'm not sure which one did the shooting, so I'm going to have to wait for them to... There's a trigger line. I just walked... That's why I pushed up and did what I did, is there's a trigger line that will get them... To, that will draw them out, and they'll push up. And so there's a little bit of trying to draw them out like hey I'm over here so they did split and they're both shooting so now I can just headshot them now we'll see what see if they dropped any uh, rockets
Still two more grunts, or two grunts remaining at the uh, exit. And I am going to save the last one to uh, our melee sergeant. Time there with that one had his shield down. It should have been just a simple one shot headshot. In this room, there are three pairs, three pairs of kinetic and plasma ammo dispensers. I'll be able to refuel and max the ammo out on the plasma pistol and pulse carbine. Stalker. So I got my shield. And so once again back to collecting weapons and ammo for the next engagement in the next room. The next room is going to be small room, small long room. It's going to be two brutes. And I can get to, at, at best, get two more rocket launchers. And so I'll go through this process of gathering up all the however many rocket launchers it turned out to get. So it turns out I was able to collect three out of a possible five rocket launchers from the skimmers. The first one was the one that pushed in the very beginning. He kind of came through and I got him and uh, he dropped a, dropped a rocket launcher and then of the remaining four, two of them I found on the ground here. Now these two over here. I've run into numerous types of ways that I've managed to kill or at least seen the uh, skimmers get killed and it's really very random and you can't really count on collecting rocket launchers from all of these skimmers. Uh, in most cases you'll get them from the, from the brutes without you know too much trouble. It's the uh, skimmers for some reason there's something with them that their rockets just kind of either vanish or pass through the floor and into an abyss and and never be seen again. Uh, so there's other times, and I think in other missions, in the upcoming mission, uh, Command Spire, whereas you see them drop, and they're like 50 feet, 50 feet below the floor. This particular structure that I was just standing on, I had to run where they had fallen down inside of that. They were at the base, they were at the ground, but they were inside the thing, and it was two of them. And so, I've seen, I've, I've meleeed, which is like a, with uh, the BR, meleeed a uh, skimmer, stabbed them, and I've seen them drop it, and I've seen them just, just the rocket disappear, killed them, you know, just a simple headshot. As in different times, such as unexpectedly, they not see me and shoot and kill them and where the rocket launcher go. And other times, it's been I've made sure they see me and engage me, fire a rocket, and I know I've seen the rocket. I've seen it in their hands. They fired it, headshot them, and it just utterly disappear and just go into just going nowhere inexplicably disappear. So it's, it's one of those things you just can't really count on. See, there's right there. And there's another one. Two of them right there. There's the two missing ones. The 20, 30, 50 feet under the, under the floor. Yeah. The rocket launchers come in very handy with the hunters as far as the uh, method and tactic that I use to uh, fight them. I'm moving the heat wave and the sword. I don't recall using the sword, but it's a just in case of any kind of particular situation where I feel more comfortable with using a sword. Say if I my shield is low and I have a tough situation, and I feel better about getting away with a sword swipe than just a melee. 
heat wave will come in handy with the upcoming brutes. I'll put a drop wall down and uh, fire through the drop wall with the heat wave and then just headshot them. So that is coming up right now. I, I prefer to have them in line where I can shoot because the uh, heat wave will go through one and into the one behind them. So it's three, four shots. I at least want to fire enough to where it might knock off a helmet. And I think that's going to be... Well, I will be using the heat wave for the upcoming brutes in the uh, next room. There'll be four brutes total in the next room. Two of the four brutes in the next room are going to have sentinel beams. The other two will have rocket launchers. Now it's just back to moving the stockpile and getting everything set up for this next fight. But in this next room, there's going to be uh, two skirmishers. And it really kind of varies as to if they want to push up or not. Ideally, I want them to push up so I can just... Yeah, and this door acts goofy. It's closed and it won't open, but then it, it will open. I think I just got to back away enough to just reset it. So yeah, here comes the skirmisher. I prefer that. And good to get that other one because the two of them, each of them, one to the left and one to the right. It becomes... And see, so here comes the door again. I am in front of... See, this would have been terrible if I'm getting taken engaged with enemies and they're going to fire a rocket and I'm trapped there. Yeah, that's that's terrible. The, uh, the game just you just the game just can't do that. Yeah, this guy's wigging out. That's hilarious. And so in and yeah, so in this next room, you have to the left side, you'd have one skirmisher, one grunt, one brute and the same to the right side. And so it's ideal to just engage the grunt and the brute without having the skirmisher get involved because they're in kind of separate places whereas the skirmisher's to my left and the grunt and brute are to my right and I'm going to put a drop wall down but it's the drop wall is not going to protect from all three. And in that same room there's going to be a couple grunt uh, sorry, uh, Jackal Majors, they have plasma pistols, and there'll be some grunts, it's not too many grunts, I think, um, you know, there's one to the left, one to the right, and there's like a couple of them in the middle area, and at the exit door, there's a couple scripted just to kind of hang out at the exit door, here comes the door again, it's got me locked in. There it opens up. So with this method or or tactic is I'm gonna put a drop wall down Look at that. and take out the grunt the and the hologram, it looks like the spire of And We're here I'm trying to aim with them both in line so that the shots will inflict damage on both of them. And I have two birds with one stone. I gotta watch out for the enemies in the middle because some of the grunts like to throw nades. The jackals will shoot with blast pistols and take out your shield. Disruptor fire. Trying to get that headshot. Oh, and these grunts will suicide. You might get just as few as one and yeah that's that's gonna make for a good time 52 card pickup yeah weapons just went everywhere so at minimum you can get one grunt and it's really kind of rare if none of the grunts suicide and I think if you just manage to kill them all quickly and just just go right for the grunts and kill them then, then you're not gonna have any uh, suicide but I've seen as many as three grunt suicide in that room. 
and I also get the the rare instance of when he goes to suicide, he just stands there with the nades, and then a brood is there, and he'll throw the grunt at you. But don't count on this mission and with the skull settings to get that achievement for killing a grunt that's been thrown at you. That's uh, has. And this is kind of unusual, this brute pushing up. I hear the Jackal Majors nearby. They're scripted to hang out in the middle area. They, they haven't really, they don't push up. There's also a grunt down there. I think there's another grunt. I think maybe that one that uh, was suiciding is uh, one of the other two. This one here is the second one that's part of the bunch. Yeah, I was thinking about using a drop wall, but it's the same as I like, had. Yeah, it's just a grunt, and then the jackal steps out. So I have shield damage, and I need to. I need to melee an enemy. There should be two grunts back there, but it looks like there's one on the threat sensor. I need to plan on here for there just being one grunt. And this is the worst thing. Here I need to get the shield, and he's going to be the one to suicide. So this is two grunts that have suicided from this room. But no matter, in the coming room I'll be able to, uh, in the rooms coming up ahead, I'll be able to get my shield back. I'll find an enemy and be able to melee. So the next room in the next uh, fight that will be coming up will be uh, jackals like, uh, yeah, just regular shield jackals and then an elite. There'll be three grunts. That's kind of part of the reinforcements of the, uh, the room. And so I'm not going to take a plasma pistol. I'll be able to, I can leave the plasma pistol behind. I can leave the heat wave behind. And I'm just going to go with the uh, Pulse Carbine. Take the however many rockets I can gather up. There should be two rockets dropped in this room. Just looking around for the rockets. There's one on the left side and one on the right side. And here's the second one. And now I have a second old rocket launcher. Which is ideal for what I'm doing. For my planning for the hunters. If I'm looking around for my plasma pistol, as I've said, I'm not going to take plasma pistol, so I'm not really sure what it was I was planning to do with it. I'm not going to be using it going forward. The Stalker will come in handy with the last room or the last fight before the Hunters. There'll be some, uh, it, it's a large, long room. And there'll be several enemies. There'll be uh, a, a, a Plasma Turret. I find that room, as I mentioned the Plasma Turret, I find that sometimes that Plasma Turret doesn't spawn, and I think 
it may be replaced with a different, like a different enemy grouping or something, as in probably not even recognizable or noticeable different enemy groupings. Or maybe it's just that the weapon spawns, it's just on some kind of random, some kind of randomness with the, uh, with the turret spawning or not. So the stalker is for that turret and for enemies, uh, especially grunts that are distant, can be used for brutes. There will be four brutes total. But there's also a rack that has uh, a couple shock rifles, and after using the stalker for a few kills, then I switch over to the uh, the shock rifle. So this upcoming fight. Uh, whether you go to the door to the left or the door to the right, there's going to be a skirmisher that's on patrol. And unless you're standing right in front of him, he's not necessarily going to see you or react to you. Here I go again. I'm moving the plasma pistol, and I'm not going to be using it. Good. Oh, no. I am moving it still. I think I'm moving the plasma pistol as a contingency if things go wrong or weird with my initial plan with the elite. But as as I think I figure out, there's a rack that has a couple cinder shots, and if if things go well, then I won't need to use the plasma pistol. Uh, but if I get shield damage, as in if I lose my shield, which can happen, then I'm going to want the Plasma Pistol or the Camo Elite. And I can get a sword from, one of the, from the first Elite, and then I can just stab them and get my shield. So I think that's the planning for the, uh, for the Plasma Pistol. With the uh, Skirmisher... What I, even though I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter, you can make all the noise you want here. But in the room below, there's going to be three jackal, three jackals with a shield. I think two jackal majors and a jackal minor. And I wouldn't want them to be alerted with any kind of engagements up here, shooting and stuff like that. Better that I can walk down there and they're just on patrol and I can easily headshot two of them, and the third one can just uh, do something dumb and reveal his head and I can get a headshot on him. With little, little risk involved. So in this room below, like I said, three jackals with shields, and then when those, once they are killed and you, there's a trigger line that you walk across that will trigger Three grunts and an elite to come through the door, and I'll put a drop wall down and have the. You know, I'll explain here in a moment. So you don't see me right away. I want to try and get. I want to see at least a couple of them. So there, and get two of them, and then the third one will just kind of walk around, and then I'll just pick them off. So with the uh, the next enemies. Three grunts and elite. Put the drop wall down. Pulse carbine. Fire through it. And I want to at least get them to try and throw a nade because they're going to be in a tight space. And the goal is to hopefully inflict enough damage on the elite that he either dies or loses his shield. So the trigger line right here at the doorway. Here they come. I had the wrong weapon out. And if I can inflict enough damage on him, then I can just headshot him. And I believe I have that. There we go. The thing is, there's a, there's a chance for me to take damage here on my shield. I can actually lose my shield. If I actually go into a fight with the Elite and just have this chaotic running around fight, I can lose my shield. And it's going to be much more difficult to try and get my shield back. And so that's the reason for the plasma pistol, because uh, this next room is going to have two jackal miners, a camo elite or spec ops elite, and then a uh, elite ultra. 
you'll see how they're scripted from the left and the right. You'll see them come out into the middle of the uh, room that they're in. So it's just kind of a long haul. And the Spec Up Elite will charge. He's scripted to charge into this room and pursue you and engage you. So at this point, being that everything's good with my shield, I don't have any trouble, I can just use the uh, Cinder Shot to uh, just take him out. Making that just a low risk engagement and not have any uh, risk of uh, taking damage. That'll be an easy kill. Cinder shot I grabbed is a six and six. I have plenty shots. So I'll get my threat sensor down here. I just cross the trigger line. Here they come out. I want to headshot the two jackals. Here comes the spec op elite. I want to make sure, you know, got to be concerned with him throwing a nade. And I'll. I need to go after the elite because he'll hide. He does step out. He can, he can step out and engage. But this works out best. I can put the crop wall down. He's done. Now I just move all these weapons aside. And move the stockpile. I won't need the plasma pistol. I won't need the heat wave or the sword. Just move this stuff out of the way and just get what I need for the next fight and for the hunters. I contemplate on taking a sword for the hunter fight as many times as I have tested you know engaging the hunters in a situation where you know I don't have a shield or at least the planning of hey let's say I don't have a shield and I need to get I need to swipe a hunter to get my shield back. You can't count on it. You can I have planned and tried numerous multiple ways and sometimes it you know it can work out but it doesn't work out every time you find a way to get close to a hunter stab him is usually your best chance if you just punch him it, it doesn't have the kickback with just a melee but the sword does provide a little bit of a kickback or a blow to buy you some time to get away but I find whether it's just maybe they're in a rage mode and they're more enraged or more aggressive, it seems like the moment you stab them, even if they're not looking at you, they turn around and smack you. And there's, it's like you have no chance. So it's more of a rare instance where I can get away with uh, trying to get my shield back from a uh, hunter. So it's just a contingency as if you say, all right, if I'm going to lose my shield and I'm fighting these hunters and it's early and I need to have a shield, then it's kind of going to go towards the planning for that. And it has to be with just one hunter being alive. If there's two, I have no shield, then it's, they really, the chances are really drastically increased of surviving that. So moving fewer weapons is best. Doesn't make for good viewing, I realize. Now, sometimes you get in this room and the enemies are in patrol mode and don't see or know you're around yet, and I can step in and get a headshot off of like a grunt or two. Especially if they're gonna be, you know, one by the turret. But it turns out that it, it, I'm not sure what set them off or, if, you know, what alerted them, but this particular time, they were waiting for me. No enemies ex that can see me except for what's at the turret and the uh, jackal sniper that's on the left side. But if the jackal sniper saw me, he would be shooting. Yeah, I missed with the threat sensor. So I took a little shield damage. It's going to be difficult to get my shield back off this fight. It's one of these things that can be done near the end of the fight. I don't necessarily say I want to engage the brutes and get my shield back from them. So my best chances are to save a grunt 
Or at least find a grunt that I can get near. And here comes the jackal sniper that can see me. Got that threat down. There's going to be four skirmishers. Here comes one of the group. I'm sorry, one of the grunts. Now, that was probably an opportunity to get my shield back, but there were still too many other enemies around that would be shooting and engaging me. So I was saying there's four skirmishers. One to, you see on the threat sensor, one to the left and one to the right. The one to the left, bottom left, pretty much stays there. The other ones do kind of move around. There's in the far back left and far back right, they kind of run and move around. And at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the shock rifle. I can't count on getting my shield back from a skirmisher. It's it's difficult to try and corral them, corral one of them to, uh... Yeah, I am having a hard time trying to get a headshot on that grunt. He's just sitting there inviting me to shoot him in the head, and I'm missing. Yeah, so it's possible on that skirmisher to the bottom left, I could grapple, shock him, and punch him out, but there's grunts down in the the uh, center area below. I wouldn't want to be taking disruptor fire or get stuck by a nade. So there's one more dis uh, one more skirmisher hanging out with that brute to the right. There's going to be one brute to... Actually, there's two brutes to the right, but one of them will show up on threat sensor. The second one is behind a door that I guess has not materialized yet. I'd just rather shoot that skirmisher instead of getting into a melee, because it takes four melees to kill those things. You have the rare instance where you can punch one from behind and get the kill, but it can't it get a guarantee from that. Unsuspectingly, if they in patrol mode and don't see or know you're around, then you can melee him from behind and get the single melee kill. So one brute to the left, one to the right. The one to the left is going to be a uh, shock rifle, sniper brute. One to the right has a sentinel beam. In the in the bottom middle area, there's uh, like I was saying, there's grunts. One of them is a mule, and I think I just best save the mule for last. But it doesn't always work out because. Sometimes they, he gets aggressive, you want to call it that, and just he just walks towards you, shooting and throwing nades. With the uh, front ultras, I'd just rather just take care of them because they'll shoot with the disruptors and they throw nades and they're dangerous. Unsuspect because, you know, if they're hiding around corners, they're hiding behind cover, you know, that's the worst thing you need. So there's a trigger line to trigger the, uh, the brute to come out on the left side. There'll be a second one. There'll be a second brute that will come out from the left side. He's got a skewer. Just showed up on threat sensor. So I need to take out that last skirmisher. Yeah, he's going to throw an aid. Now yeah, took more damage. Yeah, sometimes the shock rifle can deliver a one-shot kill being a headshot. And I guess it just kind of random as to it's just going to knock off his helmet and he survives. So that brute to the right side, he's got a sentinel beam, but he also has a shield. So he's not a sniper. He'll have the full shield. So he takes his shield's going to take a lot more damage to, to knock off. Those plasma foils, yeah, seem a bit risky to want to keep nearby, so I'm just going to get rid of them. I don't have any accidents. That looks like the mule down below in the middle. Yeah, see, he's throwing nades, and that makes me nervous because I can't see where he's at. All right, there's going to be a second brute. And see, I don't want to engage this grunt yet. Good thing I got that second brute. Now I can go after this grunt. He's the last enemy left alive.
And yeah, that could have been. That could have gone really bad. Goes to throw the nade. And I think he died from his nade. There's times where the nade will kick him and blow him across the room and still survive. Even though he doesn't have a shield, and I've seen uh, Grant Ultras lose their shield, a nade explodes near him, blows him across the room, and still survive. And that can be the worst, because you think everything's dead, and he's not saying anything, and kind of walks, you know, kind of walks back to the area he's, you know, guarding, and then he sees you and throws a nade on you, and he may not even tell you about it. So now it's planning and moving the stockpile and gathering up the weapons for the hunters. Which, as you see now, I'm going to take a disruptor, but it turns out I'm going to take three disruptors. So I have a method of using the disruptor. The disruptor I find very effective against the hunters. However, it's a risky fight to use the disruptor against the hunters. But it turns out I'm saving the disruptor for the second hunter. I can kill the first hunter with the volatile skewer. And the second hunter kind of has, he, I just call him dopey. He's kind of this dopey mode. At times, he doesn't seem like he knows where you're at. He paces around and doesn't seem like, you know, he has any direction or an idea where you are. And then in, like, an instant, he turns and knows right where you are and just engages you. And he's, uh, being that, his, you know, if his brother's been killed, then he's in kind of a an enraged mode, uh, very aggressive, but in this kind of dopey aggressive mode, if, if, that's, if that's a thing. Uh, so I'm going to take three disruptors... A Ravager, and I'm trying to think what other, oh, and uh, two, two skewers, two full skewers. I think I'm, at this time, I'm scanning for, disru for uh, disruptors. Uh, there was two of them on a rack. I think there was three to four grunts. I think at least four grunts. So there should be four disruptors laying around. So with three disruptors, I can get a full one with one and a partial left over. And there's a dispenser, a shock dispenser, so I can pick up a, uh, a disruptor and get it filled off the dispenser. And as far as planning, if I get past the hunters, the next enemies beyond the hunters is just sentinels and so I don't necessarily have to plan to take any weapons for the sentinels because the there'll be some weapon racks there'll be some weapons that I can pick up and collect such weapons as shock rifle sentinel beams and there will be one wreck that will have a single cinder shot that can come in handy. So really just what I plan to carry going forward beyond the hunters to go up against the sentinels is I'll carry a full skewer. You can see one of these, the regular skewer in front of me. I can carry one of those. And it, it works like a type of combo, like a noob combo would work used a uh, shock rifle to remove the shield, and then single shot with the skewer will take out a sentinel. And one of those skewers will have a total of eight shots. And this part of the uh, weapon gathering and thought process is to make sure I have everything for contingencies, for, you know, the various situations that can come about. Working my way back over to this side for the disruptor. down and get it topped off. Yeah. 
find the Ravager and flip it and move it along. Now as far as the method and the reason for the different weapons is the Volatile Skewer can kill a single hunter just by itself. Given that all the shots are direct hits and I can get, I can get eight direct hits, I can get the kill. Sometimes it can take uh, seven shots. I've even had as few as six kill a hunter. The, uh, seems like I'm just taking one full skewer. I don't even know if I end up using it or not. But the, uh, so I can get the kill with, uh, at least get one hunter down. And then that way I can engage the other hunter. So the really true part of it is to engage one hunter at a time. You can't, it's too chaotic to try and do two. You have this mule that hangs out down here. Ideally, I want his back to me so I can move the weapons along. He is kind of scripted to do different things, but he has moved to his final resting spot, and I can move all the weapons in. I want to get him to slide down the ramp and into the room as much as possible. And so back to the weapons. So if I have a hunt, if I have the hunter that's encroaching and getting too close to me, the rockets are for blasting him and kicking him backward and away to so he keep his distance from me whenever if I get the first one dead and killed then the second one is like I said in a rage mode and so different weapons I have for kicking him and pushing him away I want to save the rockets for that purpose so if I want to use the disruptor or the other skewer to get shots on him and if he gets angry and just wants to charge or move forward I can kick him back with the rockets or the the Ravager can be used. Do a charged charge Ravager on the ground. It cooks him, and he wants to back away. And so that's ideally what I want is to keep him backed away, so I can shoot through a drop wall or in cover, and keep him from distance. And I can just shoot and engage him uh, without him uh, charging and shooting. Gets too chaotic having to flee and jump and run with all the garbage and all the stuff in the room because anything and everything in that room that gets shot uh, can splatter you and kill you easily. Now, this is unfortunate. I did not want to engage that mule so early because then the hunters then uh, get agitated and they want to shoot and get involved. But it seems that they are staying in place. There's one to the back left and one to the back right. I want to get that crate out of the way and at least he can obs obscure his view so he can't see me. There's a trigger line to cross that will engage them to come in and charge and go to a scripted area. One will come to the front left and to the front right. And ideally, and I find this consistent, the one that's on the right will approach to an area to the right but in a place where I'm in cover and he can't see me and that's that is the ideal situation so he can't see me if he does see me and now things are engaged things have started see if he can see me then he'll get involved and he'll push up and charge and what I want is just one at a time this one I can engage and shoot this one without the other one seeing me shots on him with the drop wall with the ex extra shock effect because he has the extra damage. There I have the rage mode. Now a little more than 75% dead. I need to get the kill here real quick and there he's down. The other one is solid. Now I got what I want. I have one dead. Now I can engage this other one. He doesn't know where I'm at. You can see he's just kind of lost and he will just pace back and forth. He will shoot from that area and doesn't necessarily charge unless I, unless I guess I'm just kind of standing. See, at this point, I need to kick him away and push him away. So the shock, the, uh, so there's the rockets to kind of kick him away. And that's just what I wanted. Because now he won't push up as much. The, uh, 
skewer was empty, so I need to get myself set up for if I'm going to use the skewer or the disruptor. So I've decided to go with the disruptor here. And this is a very, very tricky way or risky way of trying to get the kill on. Just trying, because when you shoot them, it just, it, as you hear, it's like you're only going to make them mad. When you shoot them with the disruptor, yeah, you're just really going to upset them. So here I'm just trying to kick him and push him away from distance. I can shoot him with the disruptor. And it's because he's such a distance, and I can avoid some of his shots. I can step away and avoid the shots. Now he's getting a little close. He's also not going to charge in. I want to try and shoot like on the edge of his body where I can be in cover where he can't shoot me. I'm taking damage from that shot. That was too close. But here I can now get some shots on him with the disruptor. This is kind of a risky play here because he can shoot that crate and it can slap it got blasted the other way, so now it's out of the way. They're just going to try and just peck him and just continue to pepper him with the disruptor. Zip will just continue to burn and continue to accumulate. And, can, and does. Uh, and so I put the drop wall down so I can go get more ammo. And I am fortunate that that rocket killed him because had it just blown over me, he would have been behind me and I don't even think I had a shield. I had no shield and was able to get him killed off. Probably with just two disruptors. Bet he took some... I've shoot, shot him with the rockets a few times. And there it is, without dying, so far to this point, and I took on the hunters without dying. This was big. It was probably my seventh or eighth trip, probably my eighth trip here, without dying and taking on the hunters. And the the past several times, it was just a, an unexpected, just kind of silly death being splattered by something and uh, have an unfortunate end. But I managed to uh, three or four times kill off the first one and and uh, not manage to get the second one. The second one managed to get me. I had two instances where I fired the rockets and it hit something in front of me and I'm like, I have a clear line of sight to the hunter and where I'm shooting and it clipped and hit like a crate or something and I watched and rewatched and went, I've got a clear line of sight. How does the rocket hit that? And those That's two times different. is what killed me, what was now? hitting something in front of me. So, going forward, I'm taking a skewer, <laughs> a regular skewer, which I didn't use, so it has eight shots. And I can use my uh, little combo with the, uh, that was fun. Wanna with do the it sentinels. Again? Where now? Should be close now. So, Let's coming up here, it's a little bit of a walk. There'll be a crate, or I'm sorry, a rack with uh, sentinel beams and a cinder shot and I'll take one I take a full sentinel a full sentinel beam with me and I'll take the cinder shot cinder shot works well if you get the shield down the cinder shot I don't think really takes the shield down unless you get like a bounce and have it explode here I had to as quickly as possible run up and get through to the door and melee, or at least grapple melee, the sentinel. There was a bug where I had uh, done a playthrough before, but I had deaths, and I just wanted to get the playthrough just to kind of get a reminder of how things are going to play out. And this door wouldn't open. It, I come up to it, and the door was delayed and wouldn't open, and I'm sitting there just punching the door, and it was already too late. Once the door opened, the sentinel was already gone. And I had done another playthrough. I had done revert to checkpoint, and there was something buggy with the door wouldn't open and so this was un uncharted territory I wasn't sure if that door was going to open in time so very fortunate and glad the game cooperated 
to uh, open up when it when it needed to. I didn't have a shield. I'm wandering back here because I feel like I'm forgetting something or overlooking something. And I guess I also feel kind of stunned that I made it past the hunters too because it's it's quite a feat. That is, they are very difficult. And being now that I have options for the sentinels, I guess that can kind of confuse me can being I have options. Yeah, down below is a heat yes. wave. Yes, we can. And Get me over there. the heat wave could be used to remove a shield, but also a shock rifle can remove a shield. So I've decided I'm not going to mess with taking the uh, heat wave. I'm not sure it really does that much damage on the uh, if you just use it raw on the uh, sentinels. Once you get the shield down and you fire a few times, I don't think I haven't managed to kill one, but I hadn't really pursued it too much. And it just requires too much, and you're exposed for longer. back for the cinder shot. I had a playthrough where just for testing and experimenting to see how well the uh, cinder shot would work against the, uh, and I guess I'm looking for it now. I found, I saw it just a moment ago. It's off to the right there, and there I'll pick it up and see it. It's, uh, it's very effective. You can use it for its long range mode and um, take out sentinels quite well. And uh, you really get overloaded with sentinels. Now my plan is to ride the gondola halfway up until the large doorway opens up and then I can hop off and grapple around and avoid the second half of sentinels. Uh, because I'm not really sure I would have enough ammo to kill all the sentinels that are going to be thrown at me. But as it turns out, spoiler alert, I forget and as I and as I look to engage, or at least look to get off the uh, gondola at the halfway point, I had already passed the halfway point and it was too late. The good thing I managed to take out one of those without. Yeah, he's he's going to he's too far away to try and get the shot. Got a second one there. When they don't have their shield, the uh, the skewer will work great. Oh, that was a good shot. Because the way the skewer has this arc, it's hard to judge the distance and how much it's going to arc. I find I find that I probably wouldn't be able to do this again if I was, you know, had to, had to do this again. I think I'd rather engage them a little closer because the uh, shots would be more accurate the closer they are. I don't like shooting with the skewer when they're moving because the distance that it, that it travels, they just move a little bit and it can miss. So far, four for four. There will be several more sentinels coming up. So I'll try and gather up all, all the weapons I'm going to need up to this area. I guess I'm going to do my fight from up on top of there. I'll have uh, more obstru ob obstructions in my way to at least, at least block me, and I can use the drop wall. So really the plan is draw them in close and uh, take off the shield, shoot them with a skewer but that plan kind of goes out the window because these sentinels move around a lot and as I was saying I like to shoot them if they're gonna sit okay. still is active. I get you know at least get them to a, a resting point they fly and move around and they get to a point and they stop and then they move around so if I get the shield down then as they come to a stop then I can uh, hit them
good shot there. I was a little slow trying to get this one. And now they get the shield on, then it's too late to really shoot them with the uh, skewer. There's also kind of buggy delay with the uh, drop wall activating. Chief, watch out! Sentinels incoming! And I am missing the shots. This is terrible. Not close enough for me to melee or grapple melee. Here comes the door approaching, and I want to uh, look to bail and get off of here. But I wasn't going to bail off with uh, them shooting at me. Well, that was the reason why I didn't get off of here in time. Here I'm looking to right now, and I'm getting shot at, and it was our, and it just just happened so quick, went right past. And now I'm in a really dangerous situation, and I was really about to panic because. I felt like, man, I just made it past those hunters, and to die here on these sentinels would just would be the worst. And I'm missing my shots. This is just... Trying to get that drop wall to come and L break. Here we go again. It's something to do with the gondola. Better reload that sentence. I also want to hop up on the area above me because I've got, you know, like the skewer up there and the cinder shot. But I figure you have those two sentinels that that I would be exposed. And I don't know if I have a shield or if I have much of a shield at this point. I feel like I just need to get away. I will be able to get my shield back. And if, being that the game is now doing this with the, with the drop wall, it's not gonna, and I'm missing my shots, I feel like I should just cut tail and run at this point. best thing I need to do is connect with my shots through the drop wall. That way I have a better chance of getting them killed with four shots. It takes more than that if you don't have the drop wall. So the weapons I plan to move with me at this point is going to be the, uh, the BR shock rifle the and, and uh, sentinel this beam. Way. But I forget that there's going to be a uh, rack up here that's got two sentinel beams. So I really don't need to carry a second one. Now I can max out the ammo on the uh, shock rifle. I was thinking about going back for the uh, cinder shot or the skewer. And being I see more sentinels show up. Yeah, I don't want any part of that. I'm just gonna have to make do with what I have. The skewer would work out real well in the next, uh, the upcoming fights. So this next giant room here, or that's coming up, is gonna be three doors and three power seeds that need to be collected to activate the lift. And I'll kind of identify them as like 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. So 12 o'clock ahead, 3 o'clock to the right, 9 o'clock to the left. Now there's a thing with the door. The cutscene starts within like a couple feet of the door. So I was pretty much forgetting that part, but I managed to get the and juggle through the shock rifle so that it made it into the room because the door locks and there's no going back. 
on a previous playthrough I remembered and, and got it through, it but being I made it past the hunters, I escaped past, I escaped the gondola ride right without dying, and yep, I don't have a shield. That was the purpose of the grapple pound. So I will need to... The 12 o'clock door straight ahead, there's two sentinels, one to the right I think has the shield on, the one to the left doesn't. He's kind of patrolling and walking, moving around, or just kind of floating around. And so I feel like I can do a surprise jump in without them knowing about it. Get a, get a melee, put a drop wall down, and then finish the fight on them. So one to the right, he's got the shield. Or it has a shield, the one to the left does not, so I can easily get the punch and drop, put a drop wall down and uh, I will be on. So one of the methods I like to use is through the drop wall Connect with two or three shots. At least first off, get the uh, get them to break the shield. Get two to three shots with the shock rifle and finish off with the uh, sentinel beam, and it'll be a quick kill. At this point, I realize I had the sentinel beam out. It does take almost almost a full clip if you just want to go full on without the shock rifle. shooting me while I'm shooting him. So if you get shots on him, not a guarantee it's going to prevent them from shooting back. But it can it can delay him. You get enough shots on him with the shock rifle and then you apply a real good dose of sentinel beam. It will delay them shooting and affect their accuracy. And you saw with the Grapple pound was to check the status of my shield, and it's good. So, doorway to the left, it's a ramp down that takes you to a hard light dispenser, one to the left and one to the right. There's no enemies. This big room coming up ahead, there's going to be two sentinels floating around. Actually, I think it's four total. When you get the four of them killed and you go into the room, there's a trigger line that you cross that will activate to bring out two more. Two more will get summoned. There's the two in the distance, and I believe it's just I'm starting with two. I need to establish the timing of when they shoot because they will shoot in a certain interval. So I want to allow them to shoot, then I step out and shoot while I know I'm not going to be shot. I wasn't going to engage that one in close range because the other one could be shooting me. So I didn't want to melee that first one, but I can melee this one. But he's over the edge and too risky to uh, grapple and just fall into the abyss. Sentinel beam. Can I kick this stuff out of the way? Alright, kind of right close to this ramp. There it goes. Under the line, here comes two more. Fall back into this area.
three sentinels that showed up that are on threat sensor, there's four total. But I can't kill by the drop wall. I can put another drop wall down, it looks like. Now if I can get this last one to come through the door that's doing the same thing as the others, and I can melee that one. Get my shield charged. One, I just want to make sure my weapons are full. I'm going to go get the power seed. And I'm just putting the threat sensors down to make sure there's not one or two sentinels unaccounted for. Sometimes you'll get one that's like hanging out underneath the bridge. This is just a simple, I just grapple across. I'm work my way back to the main console and just touch up on my BR so it doesn't despawn. Weapons research. Earth. Good luck. I absolutely need the BR for the next mission, Command Spire. Because there are no BRs in that next mission. Who was that? Captain Jacob Keys. So this room, you walk in, they're gonna cross a trigger line as you approach that. What happened to him? Oh, uh, he's gone. Thing right there, and there they come out. There's gonna be the I was going to found. There's gonna be three of them that will come out. They can't. They kind of stay a little, a little distant. They don't push up into the door, or away, all the way into the doorway. They'll fight from, uh, from a safer range. Step out and shoot. Shoot. Put a shot on him. Go ahead and take your turn. I'll take my turn. Instead of three, it turns out to be four. of shock rifle ammo with the rifles that they drop. I think I'm going to go back and touch up on the, the, the sentinel. Thing. 
Yeah, I'm kind of thinking about bringing that along, but I really don't think that needs to. Accidents with that hard light coil exploding. <laughs> Wait this one out for my drop wall to recharge. I have a full shield. So there's just two in this room, protecting the power of the universe. I really didn't need to bring a second sentinel but it was a case of not sure how long the fight would go on if there was some kind of weirdness having to fight from the doorway and having to use the sentinel a lot for some I'm missing okay one more room to go Again, touch up on the VR. Just dust and echoes. We had no choice. Dust and echoes? We destroyed the first ring. Lost a lot of good people. I don't know how you keep doing Pretty this. Pretty much the same thing here. There's a trigger choice. line. Cross, Maybe it's my come programming. Out. I was able to get away without getting shot at. That's a bonus. This room is going to summon three sentinels. As this plays out, you'll see me summon two of them. But a second one will end up getting killed off when killing one of them. Shock effect. And on the threat sensor in the back, you'll see two more that are part of the next room. Wait for that drop wall recharge. And at this point, put that second threat sensor out there, and I'm expecting to see two more sentinels, and I don't see them. I was I was seeing four on threat sensor when starting this fight and engaged in this fight, but it turns out two of them were in the next room in the threat sensor I had put down. I had gone all the way to the very end of this room, and sh and those two had shown up. And so I was thinking there was going to be two more. So I'm still kind of like, what happened to the other two? But it turns out, like I was saying, they're just in the next room. enemies remaining in this mission.
this one. Even if I get shield damage going into the next mission, it'll reset and I'll have a full shield. There's no more enemies. Get the last power seed. Get it put in. Weapons that I'll be taking with me is I'm going to pick up the BR and take the BR and the shock rifle. I'll leave behind the sentinel beam. It worked. You did it. Just like you always do. I'm not coming with you this time. We were supposed to take care of each other. And we did. She saved me. But I couldn't save her. You blame yourself. Yes. Starting to wind this mission down. I've made it through Nexus, Lazo, or Legendary with all skulls on, except for Bandana, Deathless. Thank you for joining me for this mission, and look to see me in the next mission, the Command Spire.